notch and you are getting an experience when you purchase a journal. Favorite lid? <laughs> and I realized that none of the sketchbooks I could find were ideal for the type of mediums that I wanted to use. They were all... Hi guys, welcome to this interview with Bonnie from Archer and Olive. I got to ask her a ton of really fun questions and we spent at least an hour and a half laughing and getting her to answer those questions. We not only have a super exclusive sneak peek of some of the stuff that's coming up uh, that's going to be released by the end of the year, but she also talks about what sets her business apart from other businesses, what sets Archer and Olive up as essentially one of the best notebooks you can buy. I'm personally an Archer and Olive convert, not only because of the amazing paper quality and the awesome notebook that it is, but also because of the ethics and the awesome support that she gives to the community and artists in general. So I'm really looking forward to hearing what you think in the comments below. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. That's really important. And um, yeah, let's get started. Yes. So today we are here with Bonnie from Archer and Olive and Bonnie, I would love to know what, where did Archer and Olive originate from? Tell us a little bit about you. Yes. Hi. Okay. So Archer and Olive, if, if you don't know, is named after my two cats and they have been with me for about seven years now. So they were my first babies and... I originally, I started as a wedding stationer, doing custom invitations for people, but I realized that when I was making the invitations, I had a sketchbook, but I liked to try to put paint in that sketchbook because I was you know, trying to test some color palettes, and I realized that none of the sketchbooks I could find were ideal for the type of mediums that I wanted to use. They were all bleeding through, having problems, so I thought, oh, I'm just going to make one, and since I already have a shop, I will see if other people are interested. So it started kind of small with those sketchbooks, and then around that time, I got really into the dot grid journaling, because as a business owner, you, or even just as a human being, you have to <laughs> <laughs> organize your day like crazy. So to me, the dot grid journaling was kind of the perfect solution. And so the sketchbooks were doing good and I was liking them and I was like, you know what? I would love to incorporate my art into the dot grid journals as well. So I came out with a line, which is not what is out today. It has definitely evolved since I first came out after listening you know, to feedback. But I came up with a line that was made for artists, people who wanted to get really creative, use a lot of different mediums in their notebooks and still have something that was practical and useful. And so since then that um, has grown into what our journal of is today. That's pretty exciting. And now you've got how many, how many things are currently in the range? That is a really good question. I, there's between 70 and 90 and there might be a uh, a lot more coming soon. All right, let's hop straight into some word association. The very first word is notebook. Archer and Olive. Pencil. Doodle. <laughs> Doodle, yep. Oh my goodness. Career. Travel. Planning. Ooh. Stickers. Fun. Favorite color. Blue. Favorite drink? Water. <laughs> oh, that's so lame because really it's tea. <laughs> so you mentioned that you um, did wedding card design before you got into this. Was Did you at the time think that that was your dead set career path or did you have other aspirations for your career? Yeah, so I was doing the wedding invitations at the same time I was working for a graphic design company. and which was basically doing websites mostly, but we were doing a few other things too. And so at that point I was kind of torn between, do I want to uh, pursue the wedding stationery full time or do I want to really try to advance in my career and you know go full force with that? So 
it wasn't until the notebooks came along that I realized, oh wow, no, this is exactly what I was doing. What do you feel so far has been one of the biggest challenges that you've had to face with Archer and Olive? It really hasn't been a challenge, but the biggest shock is to see um, the amount of like ripoffs that are coming from it. So I've seen like my, well, what looks like my identical product, they stole my images um, coming on websites like AliExpress and that's just really unfortunate to me. I didn't know how to take that because I've always been really lucky as an artist and people have been really respectful. Nobody's ever directly stolen things from me. So it was, it's just a huge no-no in the art world. And so it was like a huge shock that, oh my goodness, people are starting to do this. But in a way that's kind of led to the best thing because I've really found support in the community and it's just made me realize how awesome the community can be. If we look at those um, replicas or we look at the people that are trying to come up with the same concept, what yeah. are one of the things, or a couple of the things actually, that, you know, regardless of the replicas that come out, what sets you apart as a business? Yeah, so actually about that time, um, I started think thinking that same question to myself because I was like, wow, this is so easy for people to just try to copy. Um, there's a few things that I really want to stand out on and aside from making sure that, that the quality stays top notch and you are getting an experience when you purchase a journal, you're not just getting you know a notebook, you're you're really getting that whole experience. But I have made the switch to make sure all of the notebooks are manufactured environmentally responsible. By the end of next year I want to completely eliminate the use of plastic. Right now it's super minimal and it's just in the shipping but I'm looking into the environmentally responsible packaging that's coming out next year. Um, the paper, which you probably know this, but not a lot of people know, there are so many different ways to make paper and some of it can be very illegal. So I made sure that the factory I'm working with uses FSC certified, they're FSC certified, which means they're doing you know the best practices I really wanted to focus on lifting up the community. So I'm really into, well, I, I have this amazing design team and they're creating this these free blogs for you to read, you know, three times a week. Obviously you do such a great job. So I'm really trying to pour a lot back into the community. I like to find smaller artists and be able to pay them sometimes as well to guest blog because I'm all about supporting artists instead of trying to be a company that you know doesn't pay the community and just tries to get you know free publicity. I also have a really mental health focused outlook and so this more so for for my employees but I make it a goal when they go to work I never want them that to be like the stress point in their life you know I'm always trying to create a mentally healthy environment so that they're feeling good and have an open door policy where if anything's ever going on, you know, they can talk to me. I have unlimited days if they need to take personal days, which, oh my gosh, we all do. <laughs> Those are just a few of the ways I'm really trying to distinguish Archer and Olive from some of the other competitors. You've been pretty open about mental health in the past. And why have you chosen to be that open about it? My entire life I kind of felt like an oddball because I knew something was going on but I hadn't yet been diagnosed with it. And so when I entered college and I got this di di diagnosis of bipolar and general anxiety, it kind of, it's scary, it's definitely very scary, but in a way it helped to put a name to it. And I wanted to show anybody else who might be diagnosed with something like this like it's not it it is hard and it is a challenge but it does not have to ruin your life and you can do so much positive with it and really if I could just help one person who's been diagnosed with that feel like it's going to be okay um, then I would that would be like my dream what catapulted you from kind of thinking about doing Archer a lot of to totally throwing you feet first into doing it full time. Yeah, absolutely. So I think just seeing the response from the community is what made me the most excited about it. People were, there was this lack in the community and it felt so awesome to be able to provide that for other people. And that made me 
realized like this is it this is what I want to do if you could go back in time and kind of tell yourself one thing before you started what would that be don't read the negative comments <laughs> what up until now has been your favorite Archeronel product ah yeah I love um, the B5 journals so I was originally using the A5 dot grid but because I like to create so much art and I also have a ton of notes I need to jot down the B5 size has been my best friend and I'm sticking with the classic design which is the night sky the dipper and that was probably one of the first designs I came up with and so in that way it has a special place in my heart what do you think has been some of the biggest accomplishments of Archer and Olive and yourself to date? Ooh. <laughs> well, for me, as cheesy as it sounds, being a mom is just like a huge accomplishment because it's not something that really came naturally to me. It's definitely something I work hard at and seeing my son is just a, an amazing accomplishment. And then on the career side, like it's, I never thought I would be able to have my own business and ha have that, you know, support me. So that has also been a really uh, big achievement. All right. What is something we don't know about you? Mm, you might know from my Instagram, I'm really introverted. So if I have to leave my house, that's it for about two weeks. <laughs> I will stay home. Um, I love playing D&D uh, &D with my husband, oh. which is, yeah, Dungeons and Dragons, and I used to do pinup modeling. What do you think is next for Asher and Olive? What can we expect yeah, well, this year? I'll spill the beans now. Um, well, ah, there's so many things coming, and you have to plan, like, years in advance, so it's just really crazy. At the end of this year, um, three new collections are being launched, which I'm very excited about, and then... I have been working on for a really, really long time a book that talks about using art for helping with anxiety. So it's a lot of the techniques that I use to cope with anxiety. It's the reason I got into drawing. Are there any other sneak peek things you could potentially share? There's something over here in the corner. I'll get it and you can, if you just hold on one second, I'll show you. <laughs> this is very um, just ambiguous and I don't think anybody will guess with these little hints, but <laughs> oh, that's cute. All right, so quick fire questions. All okay. Right. What is the favorite thing in your closet right now? Uh, black pants. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Keep your eyes on the prize. What's your favorite movie? Chuck Everlasting. <laughs> All right, what is on your podcast playlist at the moment? If you have a podcast playlist. I have a thousand podcasts that I listen to. So one that I'm really excited about that I it will be on on Tuesday is Amy Tangerine's podcast. Oh, yes, Craft a Life You Love. But uh, aside from that, I am huge into true crime po podcasts. So basically 99% of the podcasts on my list, um, there's True Crime Garage, Trace Evidence is a really good one, uh, The Trail Went Cold. So those are probably my top three right now. All right, what is the best gift you've ever received? It's right here on my desk. I still have it after, oh, um, like however long I've been with my husband. Oh my God, a Wacom. Wacom tablet. It was the very first gift my husband bought me for Christmas. And I just, I thought it was super thoughtful, but it has also been the most useful thing I've ever had ever. <laughs> <laughs> if you had a superpower, what would it be? A hundred percent invisibility. And that's all the questions. <laughs> that was fun as always thank you so much for tuning in please hit the subscribe button down below and if you'd like to visit us elsewhere we are all over instagram come and visit us we're also on pinterest facebook and you can hit us up on email as well look forward to seeing you next time